this was iFlix then. We were exactly 12 weeks old. We'd raised $30 million of funding. We just had a product out the door. And this was the problem we were trying to solve. $6.2 billion in consumer spending globally in emerging markets on pirated DVDs. So this is a photo taken in Banksar. Every single DVD in that entire store is pirated. Most of them are crap quality. Most of them have for awards consideration written over the top of them. But the cool thing is, is the store has a consumer loyalty program. It will call you to tell you when the next episode comes in of your favorite show. This is the problem we're trying to solve. And so the vision became, can we launch like a really cool internet TV thing? There's this internet TV thing starting and we want to do it at a really, really low price across all of ASEAN. We want to do it better than piracy. Actually create a product that is better than getting viruses, better than having to trickle down a product overnight via BitTorrent and cheaper than piracy. And so that's basically over the last 12 months what we've done. So we now work with over 150 studios globally. We have over 15,000 hours of content. It's 800 individual television shows, over 1,500 seasons to binge watch between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. when you should be going to sleep or you should be studying. That's what iFlex has become. And we've built the product just obsessively for emerging markets. And so it's light. Unbelievably, it actually works on a 3G connection. The average streaming speed recommended for a Netflix or a Hulu is two to four megabits a second, which is awesome if you live in an Uber-connected world. If you're in Jakarta, that's super, super tough. So the average streaming speed on iFlix is 650 kilobits a second. We also worked out, actually, that you've got to break the product. And so the first pivot was, how do we actually get people to really binge watch? And it's not about mobile data. They need to have the ability to download and watch it offline. And so in what was then a world first, and very quickly, I think we'll have some big US players copying us, we have over 14,000 hours of content that with one press of a button, I can download an entire episode in about three minutes on a 3G connection. This was us last week. This is the three baby photos, by the way, in the first 20 minutes of Wild Digital. Ours has a red nappy. First birthday, and so many mistakes, so many face plants in terms of learning to walk, but actually also some extraordinary success. So we've had about three million registered customers on iFlix. It's hard to know what a registered customer is in this world because people's willingness to get a free trial and then another free trial and then another free trial. I had a great uh, interview with a business journalist on live radio, and I don't usually get speechless, but he kicked off the entire interview with, right, great to have you, Mark. I'm a huge fan of iFlix. I'm on my third free trial. <laughs> oh, man. OK, so we've got a new problem. So ignore the 3 million registered accounts. We have about 1.2 million people who've downloaded apps. We have streamed 12,000 terabytes of content. On any given month, it's about 250 to 300 million minutes of people streaming or downloading content. The average, you don't watch iFlix every day. In the Philippines, on the days I watch it, I watch almost three hours. 70% of it's on a mobile device. About 35% of it's on a mobile network. And guess what? It's millennials. Growing up, you have this moment, right? Certainly when I was young, I looked up to my mum and dad, and I just, I just wanted to grow up and be like them, right? They knew everything. They were super smart. They had all the answers. And then you have this stage in your teenage years where you're like, man, they don't know anything. They don't understand the world I live in. And then there's this moment where you get 21, 22, in my case, 23 or 24, where you're like, well, OK, there are a few things they know. And some of those things I thought were pretty easy turned out to be pretty hard. And so we've been on the same journey, which is not all opportunities are problems. Some problems really are problems, and they're really tough to solve. But you also start to find yourself in that process. And finding yourself means stepping away from mum and dad, stepping away from the inspiration in the US that kind of got this thing started. And that, for me, is where things get really interesting. Because this is a theme I think you're going to hear from all the mobile companies over the next day or so. This is a presentation that was from Mary Mika. Has anyone ever heard of Mary Mika? She's like the doyen of the internet. And she prints like 9,000 slides every year. And everyone actually goes and reads them. 
right? Particularly in the US, she's sort of the, the, she's the oracle of internet stats. And one of her big transformative slides this year, which got called out in all the articles, was this one, which is, oh my god, this thing that started as a chat application and was a WhatsApp clone, because they love that word in the US. It's a clone, because we understand it in the US, has suddenly in Thailand gone way, way beyond it. Now I can search for products, I can identify them, I can buy them through Instagram. One of the primary payment mechanisms for iFlix in Thailand is actually Facebook. It's a consumer-to-consumer -consumer Facebook application. When you look at QQ, when you look at WeChat, what we believe we're seeing is a generation of companies in Asia that are actually growing up. And instead of trying to look like their US companies, they're actually stepping out of home and finding their own two feet. And so this is where iFlix is going. We kind of landed on the world that while the US is an inspiration, we actually don't think they have it right. The big algorithm, the recommendation technology which we deployed, is extraordinary, except it doesn't work in Malaysia, where you have a Malay, Chinese, and Indian population, all of whom have a differing level interest in Japanese anime or Korean drama. There's actually not enough data yet to actually solve it from an infrastructure and a data point of view. And so we're pivoting very aggressively. And so the next three to four weeks, what, we've, what we're launching, and we've taken the, the inspiration from Twitter, from Instagram, the model of finding people who I love, being able to explore the world through other people's eyes. And so in every single market, with 40 to 50 local influencers and celebrities, you'll be able to actually explore the 15,000 hours of iFlix content through their favorite playlists and understand what they love watching. What we've also realized is that one of the things that makes Spotify amazing is I don't need to go and find the name of a band. I can just explore by based on what mood I'm in. I can have a chilled out, easy Saturday, Sunday afternoon, or I can have a hardcore workout mix when I'm running. And I can just follow it. And when I follow it, my entire world of content discovery is not about the big data algorithm. It's about discovery and serendipity through the eyes of other people. Maya Curran, who is in the room, has been an amazing ambassador for us, one of the top actresses and singers and uh, celebrities in the Malaysian market. And in four weeks' time, you better follow every single thing that she watches on iFlix. We've also realized, actually, the immediacy of social media fundamentally changes the paradigm. We worked out we don't want to be the next Netflix. Netflix is super cool, but the problem they're solving is very different. What they're solving is how to kill cable in really big markets. What we want to be is the Facebook of television and movie discovery. And so you'll see a news feed over the next three to four weeks. Here's the funny bit. This is, this is my version of being a parent, by the way. I'm a single dad, so when I'm in the airport and the kids are exhausted, this is on the floor in Changi Airport. This is the new family TV time. Right? They would prefer, by the way, that they each have their own device. That's when it's really sociable. Right? But they see absolutely nothing wrong with crowding around a moment and watching content together on a tiny little device. When you've grown up with this device in your hand, you actually realize that for people under the age of now 23, 24, 60% of their content viewing is now mobile. And when you view the world through their perspective, you realize this mobile device is the most important thing in their lives, and nothing is going to change that. 87% of millennials say they are never, ever without their smartphone. And then they also say they expect social to be a fundamental part of the experience. And then one interesting stat, might be a little bit hard to read, this Asia Pacific number here. Asia Pacific leads the world in terms of social integration. And so we actually think there's the chance to genuinely make television better. I'm really hoping this is going to play. There we go. Hate it when that happens. Here we go. One of the ironies of watching television today on a mobile device is it's a very lonely experience. What we've lost is the water cooler moment where we all come back to work on a Monday and talk about the latest episode of Game of Thrones. Because when you're pirating it and watching it on your own timetable, suddenly that experience goes away. 
There are 140 million people who use a service called Twitch. Anyone heard of Twitch? Right. We're all way too old because we think it's weird to actually watch a video of someone else playing computer games in real time. 140 million people, a billion dollar problem through looking at the eyes through millennials. And why? It's this experience. When you ask a 16 year old why you're watching a video game of someone else playing computers, it's actually not about the game. It's about the 20,000 people who are commenting and engaging in that experience at any time. And so this is the internal version of iFlex with staff commenting on Mr. Robot in a time-coded way so that when I go on to watch episode one, what I can understand is the social media experience that's been around it. So we're on a, jo we're on a journey of self-discovery. When you come back to what motivates you, though, this is still my inspiration in my life, right? Last year, I shared this slide, which was, as we started to think about the business and the power of the smartphone, for the first time in my life, I actually started doing research on specs. And it turns out, if you remember in 1997, if you're of that generation, Gary Kasparov, who was a world-class chess master, got beaten by IBM Deep Blue, right? which was a supercomputer. And oh my god, computers are going to take over the world. And artificial intelligence now means I'm going to be working for a robot. And the deep fear we had last year about, do these, do these devices have the power to drive an internet television service in emerging markets? It turns out that the power of the iPhone 4S is the same power as IBM Deep Blue. It also turns out, and I wasn't allowed to bring it on stage because it ruins the microphone, but the power of my Samsung S7 Android device is now twice the power of the iPhone 4S. So we have a generation of people now with a supercomputer in their hands. What we've also discovered in the iFlix journey is actually what we're working on is a actual fundamental generational shift. Let me share two images to kind of capture a symbol of the change. This is standing. Is there anyone else here who's a failed Catholic? So I am. But if you stand at the back of the Vatican, one of the great moments in Catholicism is the, is the benediction of a new pope. This is in 2005 at the benediction of Pope Francis. At the back of the Vatican, when he steps out for the big moment, the crowds are packed. And this is the same moment, eight years later, at the benediction of Pope Benedict. This is where stuff gets crazy, right? Because it's so easy to look at statistics and numbers until you look at it through the eyes of your children, you realize that the change they're going through in their lives is so fundamental with a supercomputer in their hands. When we look at the data, we buy all of our content based on piracy data. What we've also realized is that's a global map of piracy for Mr. Robot, which is exclusive to iFlex and all of our markets. It is a, it is, piracy is a phenomenon that is across the world. The emerging markets middle class that we talk about in Southeast Asia is not a Southeast Asian phenomenon, it's an emerging markets phenomenon. And you can watch it literally, market by market, episode by episode, as piracy grows. And the statistics are exactly the same across the African sub-Saharan continent as they are across Southeast Asia. And then you start looking at the world in a very different way. This is a view of the middle class. If anyone's been in the FMCG business, you think about the middle class. And the middle class is easy to understand because it's basically a North American phenomenon with parts of Europe. Until the next 15 years, when the middle class basically stops being an American phenomenon and starts becoming an emerging markets phenomenon. So what inspired us when we started the business and we were 12 weeks old when we went at Wild Digital last year was piracy. How do we create a kind of cool internet TV thing? What now inspires us is the next 3.5 billion people who are joining that emerging markets middle class over the next 10 years. And guess what? They're completely connected to the internet, whether it's shared Wi-Fi or mobile data. They have a supercomputer in their hands. They are hungry for access to global content, and all of them in this wonderful world of empowerment expect to be in complete and utter control of their entertainment experience. And so that's the new crazy vision for iFlex, which is to step outside of Southeast Asia. We now have offices in nine cities. We've got about 320 people. If we're from Morocco to Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Johannesburg, we're finalizing plans to launch in Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Zambia in Q4 this year. And it's really to revolutionize, to rethink the entire television experience and do it in emerging markets globally and to bring the world's best content at a price that everybody can afford.
So that's the crazy idea. And working with Patrick every day, you get used to crazy ideas. And so I just want to share one thing with you. There are some not so good crazy ideas. Because the other part of the iFlix journey is this one. So guys, thank you very much. Ah. Ah.